Have you ever seen those color shifting or color changing paints and thought to yourself, how do they do that? It's always intrigued me and I was curious about how the application would work. I know that typically you're mixing various pigments into a colorless base, but would these work just as well on shoes? Would this powder clog an airbrush or is this something you could even do by hand? Well, in this video, I'll put all of these questions to the test and then pick my favorite one to create a new pair of Air Force Ones with. Okay, let's break down what we're working with today. I picked up the Kaleidoshift pigment, which is a purplish powder that has a vivid holographic effect. The product photo is shown here as well. We also have a Chameleon pigment. This one is mint, teal, and plum and shifts colors at different light angles. Next up, we have a thermo activated option, which shifts from blackberry to orange once it hits 86 degrees. What I've always found funny about this option is that you typically see it shown off with a heat gun. And since you can't exactly carry a heat gun with you everywhere, I'm curious how it'll work in other conditions. After seeing those viral women's Air Force Ones, I had to pick up a UV activated white to magenta option. This one, to me, has the strongest potential to feel like you have two different shoes. And lastly, this oil slick option is the one that I am most excited about. It claims to have a mirror chrome effect, so I'm really looking forward to it. The next step is to mix each of these with Angelus Neutral Paint, which is our colorless base. I'll measure out one gram of chameleon pigment from the container and mix it with one ounce of Angelus Neutral. Same for UV and thermal, I'll weigh out one gram and mix it with the neutral paint. Okay, now these are way, way, way more clumpy than the chameleon pigment was, so just something to monitor moving forward. The Kaleido Shift and Oil Slick options say to mix one gram of pigment with up to six ounces of clear base. However, mix ratios can be adjusted for more concentrated coverage. We'll stick with a one-to-one -one mix for these just to keep it simple and in line with our previous mixes. Now here's just a couple quick looks at how each mixture looks up close. All right, so three of the five pigments say they work best against a black base. So I'll take a scrap Air Force One and we'll paint some of the panels black, but I'm gonna leave a couple white for the UV and thermal options. Let's test out this kaleidoscope effect first on our toe box. After just one coat, you can already see the iridescence. I'll apply another coat to ensure even coverage, but so far this looks great. Now on to our chameleon paints. With this being such a light color in the mixture, I'm skeptical about how it'll look against a black base. But wow, even with this orangish brown base, it still ends up looking teal somehow. All right, so now that we've tested a couple of these, I really dig how this chameleon effect turned out. You can also see how it looks up against a white base here as well. Pretty crazy that both of these came from this same mixture. But now I can't wait to test out this oil slick option next. The colors looked absolutely insane in the mixture. As we begin applying it, I can already see some of that color shifting on the swoosh. This is easily my favorite one so far. Moving on to the thermal shift option, I decided to lay down a couple coats of white paint first to see if that made any difference. To speed up the drying process, I heat set the leather. It must have still been warm because as I applied the purple mixture, it quickly turned orange. This is the mixture I was most worried about. The other ones looked pretty solid after one coat, but this one looked very uneven. After a few coats, things weren't getting better, so I decided to pull out the airbrush. I mixed just enough too thin to run this through a strainer. It actually worked much smoother this way. I somehow had some powder or pigment land on the shoes, so I must have done something wrong during the mixing process. To try and redeem myself, I'll move straight into airbrushing on the UV option and skip painting white first to see if that makes a difference. I made sure to crush up the pigment better before mixing, and this option looks infinitely better. Now I wanna give you guys a clear look at how all of these pigments turned out in some various lighting situations with a DSLR camera versus an iPhone, just really give you a feel for them. However, I've got a story to share with you first. 
This is Gautier. He recently attended the DCF Experience and came all the way from France. He actually worked on a pair of color shifting shoes as well over the weekend. He ultimately landed on a design that features a floral print that shifts colors in the sun, and these turned out ridiculously cool. I think utilizing these pigments as just a feature of the overall design is where things can really be taken to the next level. Back to our experimenting now though. Let's whip up an Air Force One with what is easily my favorite option, the oil slick pigment. My upper was painted metallic silver first, since I thought it would complement the purples and blues. Then we lay down our black base on the oil slick panels, even those pesky edges, and you should have something like this. When you start laying this down, you realize this is definitely one of those things that makes painting fun again, since the results are so instantaneous. But now, let's take a look at how some of the pigments from earlier turned out in various settings. First, we have indoors with just a little studio lighting. And then here's how they look outdoors in the shade. And finally, in bright daylight. It's cool to see the thermal shift option did in fact start to change when outside for a bit. With regards to the oil slick Air Force One, I can absolutely see this being a cool feature that I'd like to revisit and add to some type of project down the line. Now, if you enjoyed watching this experiment today and are considering getting started with this whole airbrushing thing, but maybe you're wondering if you can get by with a cheaper alternative or some other solution, make sure you check out this video next. All right guys, everybody get out there and just create.